there's kind of like a tale of two cities going on in DC. Um, and we've been focusing on what EPA's been doing, but there's really this big battle going on since the Republicans took over um, the House of Representatives um, in the last election that you've got EPA doing all these things that you know environmental folks have been pushing for for years, and now that you know we've got um, someone decent running EPA, Lisa Jackson, like we're starting to you know see some progress happening. We finally got this guidance put out um, that you know clearly says that we're actually going to protect all the waters of the United States, um, and um, on the other side, you've got um, Congress, well, well, the House, really, that's been doing, thinking up every crazy thing they can possibly think of to get rid of EPA. Um, and it really is getting to the point where they actually don't think EPA should exist. I think just the other day, um, I think this article actually came out of the New York Times, but it ran in a bunch of places, but it was basically like um, sort of an EPA's hanging tough article and it was like talking about how Lisa Jackson is really getting out a lot of important, important environmental rules. Um, so this EPA guidance is really important on the water side. On the air side, EPA is working to finalize some big important rules um, about coal plants, so to reduce mercury and arsenic from coal burning power plants. Um, and also um, they're very close to defining coal ash so like these coal plants after they burn all their coal, um, most of it's still left over in the plant is ash and they have to put that somewhere. Um, and um, they're very close to defining that ash <coughs> which has all these metals in it. Like, you know, if it doesn't go out the stack as arsenic and mercury is in the ash. Um, so you've got all these toxic metals in it. So they're very close to defining that as hazardous waste, which they should have done years ago. Um, so the Republicans are proposing to cut 20% of EPA's budget. Um, they're also proposing to um, get rid of, uh, to reduce EPA staffing to 1992 levels. Um, so that's, I don't know how many years ago. I mean, basically um, 20 years 20. ago. Yeah. 19. 19. Okay. Anyone here born in 1992? <laughs> <Three. laughs> um, so um, obviously there's been, uh, so that's, that by itself is pretty crazy, but they're also, as they've done in previous attempts, have been tacking on these riders, and they've been trying to do this on lots of different bills, but they're doing it on this budget cutting stuff that they're talking about now. Um, which would basically, I mean, I heard Lynn Thorpe, um, our national campaign coordinator, sort of say, I don't even know what EPA is going to do with the, with the money they are getting, because there are all these things that say, well, you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this. And at a certain point, it's like, is EPA doing anything? Because Congress has said, well, you really can't protect the environment. It's not all just about EPA. The Department of the Interior um, recently said that they're not going to allow someone, I'm not making this up, they're not going to allow someone to mine for uranium in the Grand Canyon. Um, this bill would say, no, mining for uranium in the Grand Canyon is a great idea. Um, and even though they're cutting 20% of EPA's budget, they snuck in here an extra $55 billion for um, oil companies just because that's what they do. And that's how you know, like, this has nothing to do with fiscal responsibility or the debt or the deficit. It's all about lobbyists telling people who they've given money to, you need to do this now. And there's also been actual legislation that's been introduced <coughs> recently, uh, which we're just starting to call the dirty water bill. This is a bill which basically is going to set this precedent that states can do what we, they want, uh, EPA is not going to be able to have authority over states so that if you have a state government that's really bought off by industry and they decide to gut all the environmental protections in the state, there used to be a federal backstop. That's why we got a Clean Water Act in the first place. Because before the Clean Water Act, we didn't have federal water rules. States did whatever they want, wanted. Some states were starting to do some good things, but a lot of them weren't. Um, obviously, Ohio wasn't because that's where the Cuyahoga caught on fire. Uh, uh, but you know, that's when people realize that we need a federal system. We need standards that protect all Americans and all bodies of water um, from pollution. And that's exactly what they're working at, at gutting at, either through direct law by just saying EPA is just not going to have authority anymore, or basically dismantling EPA, or, you know, by burning their dollar bills. Um, 
and, and you know, making sure they just, they might exist, but they're not actually going to be able to do anything because they've either prohibited it or they just don't have money for it. So what's so important about what organizations like ours do is make sure that people actually know, like, this is what's going on out there. People want to get rid of EPA. You know, we want to make sure EPA is here to protect our water. That makes sense, right?